I got confused because so many people are wearing this. Can't try to do it. Okay. Uh, off with the light. No, the light. It is interesting because the discussion of like what we believe is so much more is more. You do think? Yeah. Come on in, everyone. Shabbat shalom. You are all being so quiet, but you don't have to be. It's okay. Come on in. Find a seat. to have everyone here tonight. Now, I do have to say, some of you I haven't seen for a long time. Don't worry. We're not really counting. We kind of are a little bit, but no, it's okay. But in case you haven't been here for a long time, Rabbi Michael and I just want to welcome you back. We know that for a lot of us, um, folks watch over the live stream every week, but sometimes it's hard to get back in the door. So we're delighted to have you here tonight. And we want to remind you that even though we are still in this sort of weird in-between place of not knowing you know, where we are in the pandemic still, if you're comfortable being able to be here together, being able to write, raise your voices in song, we'd love to have you do so. So we're going to start with an easy one that you may know. On page 10, this is Hine Matov, and it says how good and pleasant it is to be able to just be together as brothers and sisters, family, and friends. Hine Matov umanayim, shevet achim gam yachad. Hine Matov umanayim, Shevet Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Shevet Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Shevet Achim Gam Yachad Hine Matov Manayim Shevet Achim Gam Yachad. Beautiful. So whenever we start our Shabbat services together, 
We know, again, that some people are watching from home, that some of you may have come straight from work, that some of you may have to go back to work after this, and we sort of want to recognize that in case you have not yet had the opportunity to do these special Shabbat blessings, that we take the time to do them here. And tonight, we are able to invite up Alina Tenenbaum's family because she's becoming a bat mitzvah tomorrow, which is so exciting. So we are going to invite up Joyce Tenenbaum, Ron Wolf, Alexis Tenenbaum, Eli Zoe and Alina Tenenbaum and Marissa and Jordan Tenenbaum to help us with the lighting of the Shabbat candles and to do our Kiddush and our Motzi. And if you want to follow along, you can go on page two. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like grown-ups. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Eli, do you want to be the candle lighter? Yeah, it's a rite of passage, maybe. Okay. There you go. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotam, Vitzivanu, Lahad Likner, Lahad Likner, Shal Shabbat. Beautiful. Zoe, do you want to lift the Kiddush cup? Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pari HaGafen. And Amalina, if you want to do the Chala, well, Zoe, first you have to drink it too well. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMotzi Lechem Min Aretz. Amen. That challah is beautiful. Did you guys bring that? Oh, well then eat some. Oh, really? It looks so good. Okay, you should eat some anyway. So you have to. It's the rule. You said the blessing. Someone has to eat it. You'd have to eat the entire <laughs> thing. But Done. Now you're about mitzvah. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Mazel tov in advance. You guys can go sit down. Wait for tomorrow. We know that Shabbat is supposed to be this special time, and it's supposed to bring special joy to our weeks and a little bit of a, a feeling like this is a different time than any other time of the week. And so one of the things we do to mark this time is we sing on page 24, Shalom Aleichem, welcoming in the Shabbat angels to make sure that this, uh, this feels like a truly holy moment. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharit, Malachi Elyon. Mi Melech, Malachi Amlachi, Makadosh Baruch Hu. Boechem le Shalom, Malachi Asharom, Malachi When we turn to page 28 and we rise together for the words of the Baruch Hu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the top of 33. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch atah Adonai. Ohev Amo Yisrael, and we join together in words of the Shema on page 34. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevot Machoetzo Please be seated. The Ahata Eats Adona Yellow Hecha, Bahol of Abha over Hon of Shaha, over Hom Odaha, Bahayu, Hadvarim Aelem, Asher Nohi Metsavaha. Hayom aleva vecha, vishina tam leva necha, vidi barta bam, vashiv techa bavetacha, uvlach techa vaderech, ushach bacha ukumecha, ukshar tam la ot al yadecha, vahayula tota fot bene necha, uchtav tam. Amazazod betecha uvisharecha. Leman tiskeru vasitem et komitzvotai. Vitem keroshim lelohechem. Ani Adonai elohechem. Asher ho seiti erchem. Meeretz mitraim. Lehiot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem. On 41, sing the song of men and women joined in understanding and respect, the song of God's miracles and earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more. The song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai
on page 42, we sing this song that, to be fair, Rabbi Michael and I don't always agree on, but it's still a really good one, because this is the prayer that reminds us that once you find freedom, that it's still necessary to have some sort of shelter of peace over us. It's Hashki Beinu. Hashki let you in on the joke here. You see, Rabbi Michael and I, we always have an argument about that prayer because most of the really beautiful musical versions of it have some sort of English interpretation like the one you just heard. And we always have this conversation about what is it that we're supposed to be praying? Are we supposed to be praying the ancient Hebrew words? Are we supposed to be praying what's in our hearts? Are we supposed to be praying what someone else decided these words mean? In some songs we do one thing, in some prayers we do another one, but this next time when we come together for tefillah on page 46, this time I almost always remind you of the same thing, that even though we say the same Hebrew words every time, that when our ancestors wrote this prayer, they knew that there would come a day when we'd be sitting in this room and many of us would look at this and say, I have no idea what this says. <laughs> or it wouldn't resonate with us or we just wouldn't know the words. They knew that this time would come. And so they gave us this prayer acknowledging that for some of us, we would take this time and say something silently to ourselves, whether it's in English or whether it's in Hebrew or whether it's just whatever language you speak to when you speak to your heart and you say what's on your mind. This is the moment for that that our ancestors intended. So I invite you, if you will, on 46 to please rise. And if you'd like to join us in the words, you may do so. Otherwise, please just know you can pray the, the silent prayer of your heart, and that is just as good. Adonai sefata tiptach ufi agita ilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak velohe Yaakov. Elohe Sora, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'il Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora, El El Yom, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekane Hakor, Vezoher Haste Avot Vimahot, Ume Vig Ula Livne Venehem, Leman Shemo Baalava. Melech Hozer Umoshia Umagin Baruch Ata Adonai Magin Avraham Lezrat Saram Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye HaKol Ata Rav Lehoshia Mechake Ochaim Bechesed Mechaye HaKol Berachamim Rabim Somech Noflim Verofech Olim Umatir asurim, umekayem emunato, lishene afar. Micha mocha ba'al gevurot, umidom elach, melech memit, umachaye, umasmiach yeshua, 
ונאמנת על החיות הקום, ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי הקום. Please be seated. Of all the things that we pray when we come together, we know that so often many of our hearts are turned towards thoughts of peace. And so this week, as we're thinking of those in Ukraine, if we're thinking of those in Israel after another difficult week, wherever it is along the world that pre- people are in need of pre- peace, we pray for them with the words of Shalom Rav on page 60. Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha Tassim La'olam Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha Tassim La'olam Ki Yata Melech Adom Lechol to page 253. And we take a few moments to think of those in our community and our family circles and our circles of friends who could use healing prayers. So if there's someone that you're thinking of who could use our prayers at this time and who would appreciate knowing that their names were shared here, I'd invite you to say them at this time. thinking too of Arlene Alper and Roberta Stern, of Alice Handelman. We're thinking of Mary, Shiloh, we're thinking of your mom. We're thinking of Michelle and Drew Patchen. And for all the names that we're saying in our hearts, we sing Amisha Bera, and we hope that healing comes their way. Renew all of body, the renewal. 
I didn't forget about you here at the very end. Thinking of all of them, we offer now one more prayer for peace of Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom Ose Shalom So earlier this week, I was talking uh, with my friend Rochelle, and so uh, Rochelle was showing me these Shabbat candlesticks that she had just gotten. And the Shabbat candlesticks, which were from like a garage sale, right? Someone found for you, were really beautiful. And there was Hebrew on it, and we knew that one part clearly said Shabbat, what we, what we call the Jewish Sabbath. The other part, though, said Kodesh, and we were talking about this idea that this is a word that you may think you don't know, but most of you do. Because the way that Hebrew works is most Hebrew words, they have some sort of a root in them, and so anytime that you hear Kuf Dalad Shin, or K-D-S-H, it means that all of those words are going to be connected. So Shabbat Kodesh, or when we do the Kiddush over wine, or when we say the mourner's Kaddish over people who have died, or tomorrow morning when we say our Kadusha prayer, and we stand on our tiptoes and emulate the angels and say Kadosh, 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 all of these words are connected, and they all have something to do with holiness. The idea of in some way being set apart and made special. So you won't be surprised then to hear that tomorrow, when Alina reads from the Torah and her Torah portion is known as Kadoshim, that her Torah portion is all about different ways that we as Jewish people are meant to be holy. And the middle section of her Parsha, the one that she's going to read that is so beautiful, has really probably the most important teachings in all of the Torah, all in this one little section. And they're a little bit random, these lines, because they're all so important and they're all kind of smushed together, but there's one that says we need to care for the elderly. There's another that says that if you have someone working in your home, that you need to always be sure to pay them immediately and not wait even as long as another day. There is one that says um, that, if you are, that you, if you are reaping your fields, that you have to make sure to leave the corners for people who are in need. There is one that says that you shouldn't place a stumbling block before the blind. I mean, all of these teachings are so, so beautiful and so important and are like the pinnacle of what it means to be a good Jewish person and to be holy. But, but the section that Alina is reading is not the whole Torah portion. It's chapter 19. Chapter 18 that comes before and chapter 20 that comes after are not quite as nice. Yeah, see, Jay knows this section, right? So this is not quite as nice. Chapter 18 that comes before um, are I was wondering if there would be kids tonight. Okay, so I'm going to say this in the most PC way I can. The chapter 18 that comes before is all about intimate relationships that you're not allowed to have. And chapter 20 that comes after it is all about what will happen if you go and have those certain intimate relationships, all the terrible things that will happen to you. Okay, this is not what we usually study with our bar and bat mitzvah kids because it's awkward and inappropriate. So the question, though, is, is why would the Torah do this? Because we know that whether you believe that the Torah was written by God or whether it was written by people, we know that there was an intentionality behind it. It wasn't just, you know, thrown out there. There is a reason that you would have these laws about sacred relationships and then all of these incredible teachings about how to be a good human being and then more laws about relationships. Why would these all be smushed together? And it seems so strange that you would have these teachings that are all about sexuality and gender 
and power and personal autonomy. I mean, all of these things, it doesn't feel like they should go together with a section about how you should you know, take care of your fields to make sure that people have enough to eat. Now, I know that probably the moment that I said sexuality and gender, you're like, oh, okay, the rabbi's going to talk about Roe v. Wade. I know you're wondering that because some of you already asked me if I, that was what I was talking about tonight, and I'm not. I'm not going to give that sermon. And the reason I'm not is because y'all have heard that sermon before. <laughs> if you have been coming here, you know that I give that sermon like at least once a year because we always have Repro Shabbat, terrible name, we didn't choose it, but we always have a Shabbat that we do in partnership with NCJW talking about reproductive health and reproductive choice. Every time that Rabbi Michael and I teach confirmation, there is always at least one class that is dedicated to this topic. This is something that we talk about all the time here at Temple Israel because as much as Rabbi Michael and I are committed to the idea that we don't talk politics from the pulpit, there are also times when it's so important to be able to share when Judaism does have a very clear teaching. And my friends, Judaism has a really, really clear teaching about how we feel about something like abortion. Because the Torah and the Talmud very clearly state that life begins at first breath. It very clearly states that pikuach nefesh, the saving of a life, is the most important thing we can do. It takes precedence over everything else. And then if you're talking about someone who is pregnant, that the precedence of the life, that that is about the woman who is pregnant. So I don't even need to give that sermon. I realize I totally just did give that sermon. But anyway, that was, that was not the intention. You've heard of him now twice. Um, but what I'd like to say is that even now, when in the news and in so many of our homes and communities we're talking about these big topics, I'd like to suggest that so many of the discussions around Roe v. Wade are actually not really about abortion. And they're not really about women's rights. I think in so many ways what they're about is actually this Torah portion. Because what this Torah portion shows us, with smushing together these, these two sort of bookend chapters about sexuality and human relationships and having all of these beautiful teachings in the middle, is those beautiful teachings, they are really like the pinnacle of human behavior. They teach us that every single person is valuable, whether it's the person who's working in your home or the person who doesn't have enough to eat or the person who is elderly, that every single person has value. And those two bookend portions about sexuality, they're not really about sexuality, they're about power, and they're about people using others for their own benefit. They're about hateful acts amongst other people. These are all smushed together so we can see the examples right in the middle of the way that we are supposed to behave in a way that is kadosh and holy as compared to the ways that say that human beings don't matter. At the end of the day, what we believe as Jews more than anything else is that each individual matters, that we shouldn't take advantage of people who are vulnerable, that every person has value. And so when we think about what it means to be kadosh, we remember that in this parsha, God says the reason that you should be holy, the reason that you should be kadosh is because I, God, am kadosh. We are acting as much like God as we can. And we know, too, that the idea that kadosh means to be set apart means that it's not easy. That sometimes if we are trying to act as if everyone has value and everyone is important, that those are not easy choices. And we are going to put ourselves in positions where sometimes we will have to defend our beliefs and our actions, and it isn't going to be simple. But the act of being kadosh more than anything says every person is valuable. And if we can take that lesson to heart then maybe we will be able to show others that every life really does matter, that our tradition teaches us the way to do it, and it's in this Parsha. So may we all find ways to find Kedusha, to find holiness in our lives, and to be Kadosh, so that we too may be godlike. So I'll invite you now to turn towards the end of our service. We are going to rise together on page 282, and we're going to turn for our Alina. Alina le Shabbat la Don Hakol la Tet Kedalal Yotzer Breishit Shalom Asanu Kegoye Artsot Velo Samanu Kemishpachot Adamam. 
Shalom. Page 287, may we gain wisdom in our lives, overflowing like a river with understanding, loved each of us for the peace we bring to others. May our deeds exceed our speech, and may we never lift up our hand but to conquer fear and doubt and despair. Rise up like the sun, O God, over all humanity. Cause light to go forth over all the lands between the seas, and light up the universe with a joy of wholeness, of freedom, and of peace. Venemar, the Hayadonai, the Melecha Koharetz, Bayom Hau, Bayom Hau, Yadonai Echad, Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo. Remember our people who suffered and died so that we could be free and secure. May their memory be more than a distant shadow. For their dreams left unfulfilled and lives taken too soon, we remember. Remember our brothers and sisters whose sacrifice kept the dream of democracy and justice alive. May their courage be our inspiration and strength. For life cut short and vision unrealized, we remember. Remember the fallen of our armed services, the victims of terror and tragedy, May the darkness of their loss not obscure the light of peace. They were in love with our land and in love with life. For the agony, the tears, the mothers and the fathers, for the children who were and for the children yet to be, we remember. At this time, we recall with love the name of one taken from us in recent days, and our hearts go out to her family in sympathy as we recall her name, Joanne Sandler. And we now recall the names of those the anniversary of whose death occurs on this Shabbat and whose names have been inscribed in the archives of our congregation or on the wall of honor for a perpetual memorial. Sylvia Altman, Mendel Bender, Hertha S. Bernard, Lorja Marge Bernstein, Simon Bienenstock, Richard Bluestein, Mary Bossy, Dr. Raymond M. Charnas, Fanny Cohen, Marlene Katz Crystal, Rachel Fried Davidson, Phyllis R. Dubinsky, Gussie Edlin, Arthur D. Epstein, Shirley H. Esrock, Pearl Figgis, Julius Freund, Nat Green, Dr. Marshall Bernard Greeman, Louis Guckenheim, Carl Hanshier, Ronald Hirschberg, Phil Isserman, Ralph Kalish, Jr., Edith Kalterman, George Kaufman, Martin Codner, Emma Levy, Irene Strauss Lippmann, Clara London, Robin Lynn Lowy, Lois Martin, Phyllis Milner, Flora Minken, Gus Nemzer, Herbert Perlmutter, Sylvia Podell, Gerald A. Rimmel, Dorothy Passa Roskin, Dr. Jeffrey Roskin, Harry Rosenblum, Albert Rothschild II, Michelle Bernard Samuels, Morris Sarner, Dr. Seymour Schlansky, Abe Schneider, Hyman Schnurman, Maxine Ruth Schuchart, Joseph Silverman, Elizabeth Silverstein, Hannah Stein, Jacob Stone, Alvin Morris Swire, Paul Troyman Sr., Jack Zinberg, Michael Victor, Charles David Weaver, Bertie Kaminer Wegeson, Harvey Weiss, Morris Wyman. And these names and the names we keep in our hearts, we turn to the words of the Mourner's Kaddish on page 294. <speaking in Hebrew> Yehe Shme Rabah Mavarach la Alam O Me Almaya Yit Barach Vishtabach Vit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Adar Vit Ale Vit Allah Shme de Kurusha Brihu La Ela Min Ko Birchata Vashirata Tushbachata Vanechamata Da Amiran Ba Ama Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabah Min Shemaya Vahayim Alenu Va Oko Yisrael Vemru Amen. O se shalom bimramav, hu ya se shalom, alenu va okoy Israel, vemru Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort all who are bereaved. And we say, Amen. O se shalom bimramav, 
Please be seated. So before we turn to our closing song, just a few words of what is happening from here. Um, first, for those of you who are Shabbat regulars, or even if you're not, um, just a reminder that next week is confirmation. Still at 6.30, still you know, maybe a little bit of a longer service, but it is a beautiful service. Um, this year we're honoring this year's class and the two classes who came before them. It's only this year's class who are really offering their, um, their words because the other two classes got to be able to say them, at least in writing, but, um, but it's a really powerful service to hear what these 16-year-olds have to say. They're really kind of brilliant, and this is their opportunity to share why they're Jewish. And so you're more than welcome to come to that or to watch from the live stream. Tonight, when you leave this room, um, if you are with the tour group, then I would ask you, you are continuing your tour with Rabbi Michael, um, to just stay in here and he will be able to continue your tour and answer more of your questions. If you are going to the Shofar Society dinner, I would recommend that you go out those doors there. You can also go out that way, but um, but this direction will get you to our Shofar Society dinner. And for everyone else, we have a delicious um, to-go egg, own egg that you are more than welcome to take to go or to stay here and have some treats. But we need a closing song, and we thought that this might be one that some of you Broadway musical fans might know by heart just a little bit. Feel free to sing along. And happy Mother's Day. Thanks. the Lord protect and defend you. May God always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May God in God's wisdom always care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord protect and defend May you. May God always shield you from shame. May God always shield you from shame. Favor us, O Lord, Favor us, o with, Lord happiness with happiness. Oh, so hear our Sabbath prayer. Hello, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. In so many ways, that is a good yeah. That's thing. uh, that's, that's okay. okay. That's okay. I, I'm all right with that. Thank you, Dr. Porter. I've got a tour.